Welcome brothers and sisters. Welcome to a new video of Triple Grace. My name is Michael, I'm the founder of Triple Grace and the Righteous Path Movement Foundation. And the topic of this special teaching from Triple Grace is the middle path. Let no shame nor guilt rule your life. Brothers and sisters, were you not always in a situation where you did not know what to do? where you were feeling shame and guilt of how your life is going forward. But why do you feel the shame and guilt? Because you are following man-made doctrines. One side who says, oh, you have to be perfect and holy in all the ways, and it will not accept your holiness on your path but will put on your shame and guilt and say you are a sinner and you will always remain a sinner and your sins are not forgiven. And it will fall over you and will come against you and they will hate you for what you are representing and what you are doing. And then the other side will say, ah, it doesn't matter whatever you do, you can just do it because all of your sins are forgiven and there is no need to seek holiness. We know we are in the world and we know that we have not received our new body. We know that we are imperfect. We all know that. Only our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he was on earth was perfect. But in our imperfection, God is calling us onto a path towards holiness. That does not mean that we have to be holier than holiest. That does not mean we have to follow what the, this people who proclaiming perf perfectionists are, are saying on the left side, nor the people who are saying you can do whatever we want to do on the right side. The middle path, brothers and sisters, is the right path. The middle path is the way not to go to the right, not go to the left, but stay on the middle path, which is the narrow and the righteous path. Now you will say, oh, you are talking about something from other religions. Every religion has a middle path. If you go and look up the word equanimity in Wikipedia, you will see that all religions have a middle path. Why? Because all religions have the question about shame or guilt. And if you cannot handle it, you will fall into the trap of the enemy. If you cannot handle it and if you are always walking under shame and guilt every day. Because nobody is perfect, so you have to, according to Satan, have to walk under shame and guilt every day. But this is not the path that the Lord has shown us. The path is what the Lord has opened us to. The door that has opened to a new path. Let us walk the middle path. Let us separate us from the world, what the world is saying, nor from Babylon, what Satan is saying. Let us remove the shame and the guilt from our lives because we know we are the two sons and daughters of the Most High. And God knows that we are in a world where we have no perfection. And he knows that and he sees our efforts to walk forward. So we will walk without shame or guilt even if we fail sometimes in imperfection, we know that the Lord is forgiving us for that. But we also understand that this will not open the gateway to hell. It will not open the gateway to sin whatever or to do whatever we want to do. The middle path is a path of understanding, wisdom and knowledge from the kingdom of heaven. The middle path is the understanding that you should not about yourself in the prosperity churches, nor should you suffer in the poverty churches, but you will walk the perfect path, so that you can fulfill your destiny on your soul level, that you can fulfill your destiny if you are in the poverty camp. How can you help others? How can you go into the neighborhoods to wipe away the tears if you are the one sitting there? So you should never belong to the poverty camp. But if you are in the debauchery camp, if you are in the camp of gluttony, if you are in the camp of 
riches and looking for money always, you will have no time to go into your neighborhoods and to help others because that will not be on your mind. This camp is also wrong. So if you see that the right and the left side is wrong, and Jesus has said that, stay on the path. Do not go to the right or to the left. Walk that narrow and righteous path. What is the middle path? Then we should commit ourselves to it. And that also means that we are not affected by shame nor guilt because we know that we are two sons and daughters of the Most High and we know that we are standing with the kingdom that our name is written in the book of heaven. But we also know that we have to guard ourselves at the same time that we have to guard ourselves against the themes, temptations of the world and the enemy. We understand that we have not to enter into any excess, no matter what we do in this world or what we have to do in this world. We should never enter into any excess. We should not put excess expectation on our sons and daughters. We should not put excess expectation on our brothers and sisters in Christ or in any other religion. But we should guide them to the middle path and let them walk with us together. We should not condemn anybody in this world because of our worldly doctrines, what most people are doing. They are coming out of a denomination and they are condemning the other denomination. Instead to come together, join hands and walk the middle path towards the kingdom because we are all two sons and daughters of the Most High. We should not put excess in anything what we do. Jesus was drinking wine, but we should not become a drunkard. We should not use anything else in excess, no matter what it is. Excess is always an arrow of the enemy. But poverty and lack of resource and lack of everything else is also a dart of the enemy. And we should not enter it. We should not make it our priority to stay in complete poverty. This is not the righteous path. Because the righteous path is a path of walking the extra mile with God. It's a path of bringing in the harvest. And the harvest need resources. And you must go and lift, lift up people and help people and commit yourself like in the 88 Group of Holiness or in the Royal Priesthood Academy so that you can get more understanding to walk that path better. But many people are not committing themselves because they are filled with shame and guilt. But these are the darts of the enemy. Don't fall into the trap of the enemy and be ruled by shame nor guilt. Many people were asking me, how can I come out of that feeling? And I'm telling you today, this is the middle path that you have to walk. You know that your sins are forgiven So what Jesus has done. His ministry was finished at the cross and he has set you free. But that will not give you a letter to enter complete in all sins. Avoid every excess. Seek a normal way in everything, but do not be ruled by shame nor guilt. God knows that this world is not in perfection. He knows that it's a fallen world, and he knows that you are struggling in this world towards his holy mountain. And he is sending you all the understanding and the guidance and the help of the Holy Spirit and everything to guide you on that middle path and to protect you against shame or guilt that the enemy is using to bring you away. Why are there two camps? Because of the enemy. Why is there the right side and the left side? Because of the enemy. The enemy has created these camps so that on one side people say, I do not want to feel any guilt or shame for anything. And they enter there, in the Bouchery camp. So I can do whatever I want because God has forgiven me. That's the enemy camp. But the other one said, oh, I should not do anything. I should be very careful in what I do and say so careful that I need to be perfection, that I have to separate myself completely, isolate myself, not go into contact with anybody because I could end up with shame or guilt. This is also the enemy camp, the wrong camp. The enemy wants that you come out of that 
narrow and righteous path. He wants that you come out of the middle path. He wants that you come out of it so that you cannot bring in the harvest, and that you cannot lift up the people, that you cannot commit yourself to the kingdom of heaven, that you are not be part of the 88 group of holiness, that you are not stepping forward as a harvest worker. This is your time now, brothers and sisters, to walk that middle path and to throw all shame and guilt out of the way to remove any stumbling block because you have the understanding that is not wrong what you are doing. Wrong is either the lack of the things or the excess of the thing. But you are walking in the middle path and God has forgiven you if you fall from time to time. But not when you go for excess, not when you go for pure lust, not when you hunt things every day for your own purpose and your own agenda. But at the same time, not when you separate and isolate you from the world, because then you cannot be an, a harvest worker and you cannot be a, a tool in the kingdom that will bring in souls, that will return the prodigal sons and daughters of the Most High from a fallen world. The middle path is the righteous path, the narrow and righteous path that will lead you to Mount Zion where you will be raptured into paradise. Now, before I conclude in this video, I want to take you to Wikipedia to see what Christianity is saying about the special word that I cannot pronounce, equanimity. I have prepared something, let us go there and read it. In Christianity, Samuel Johnson defined equanimity as everness of mind, neither elated nor depressed. You see, both sides, he's talking about two sides and you are in the middle. In Christian philosophy, equanimity is considered essential for carrying out the theological virtue of modesty, gentleness, contentment, temperance and charity. Temperance is to appreciate and choose every little sacrifice over the vexation of a source of happiness that is humor. The waters of life flow over the self-will and nothing is as elastic and irrepressible as the self-will of which it will be pressed upon and aqueous to the incentives of resistance. I think you have to read it by yourself. It seems to be very, very difficult. This providence directs the vexatious shower of rain and the ill-timed visitor is certainly as it rules the issue of life and death. All good works will delicate with delicate instruments and the importance of great events can only be justly examined by the effects which they produce upon the character. Christian patience is to bear the interruption of humor, subdue the self-will so that the weight of each affliction doesn't increase with any encouragement. That is exactly what I have told you, but only in a more easier way than this term that they use, this worldly term that they use to describe what I have already told you. Christian forbearance is a realization that all of man's current experience with sin will one day yield the positive results God intends. You see, that is also an important point. If you are not going to sin, or you just accept all the sins of this world, then how will you ever learn? How will you be become perfect for the kingdom? If you do not know what sin is, and if you do not know how to avoid excess. Working with our hands, and that labor which is reviled, as well as authority labors, we bless. This is Pauline forbearance, which brings all current state of experience to the happiness and positive results of the ultimate end within the afterlife. Forbearance is needful, as stated in the beginning of 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1 and 2, according to Paul. Let men so account of us, as of the ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Forbearance is a part of our stewardship responsibility. As stewards, we are required to be found faithful. Immediate responses to knee-jerk responses 
are in direct opposite to forbearance. Thus this, thus this isn't easy to master. Commonly it is found that the fleshly mind and impulse is quicker response than the response of forbearance. The Christian belief is to know that, the, that God's intent isn't in the immediate response but in the longer forbearance, one which spans the entire life of an individual. The principles of forbearance is to be without hasty accusations. Very important, brothers and sisters. Fault finding. You see what I told you. Hypocritical examination. Shame nor guilt. Overreaction. Rash or hasty temper. Truth commentaries. The book of Ephesians 1 5 8. We should not overreact to a brother's offense by making a mountain out of a molehill. Paul warns of false teachers, for if he that cometh preached another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. You see now, this is a point. Walk the middle path. Don't go to the other gospel on the right or on the left. Don't follow the darts of the enemy. The best does not always come to the surface. We should never before hastily imagine evil intentions in others, nor should we allow ourselves to be easily persuaded that our com companions or friends meant to treat us unkindly. A disposition to look for favorably upon the conduct of our fellow men is a wonderful observer of the frictions of life. Here you get an understanding in worldly terms, in uh, science terms, about what I have told you already. Read it by yourself. You are better in English than I am. You get a better understanding of it. But it is about not judging others. It is about not feeling shame or guilt for you what you have done, but avoiding the right or the left side of excess. If it's either poverty or if it's debauchery or prosperity, just avoid it. Walk that middle path and you will walk without shame or guilt and you will walk on that path that God has attended for you and that path that will follow the open door that you will enter there. But do not forget. Do not forget that old ways won't open new doors. The middle path, let no shame nor guilt rule your life. I love you all so dearly and I hope that you enjoyed this and I want to tell you, do not be afraid as it's here seen in the image that you are standing alone on that middle path. You are walking it as a true and faithful servant. Be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Have a great day in the Lord. Maranath.